Welcome to another fantastic musical uh, with Bishop Eustace Prep at the historic Collingswood Scottish Rite Theatre. Uh, as you can see behind us, we have our lovely, giant, beautiful set. Absolutely fantastic. We are so lucky to have such a large set we were able to get for this production. Um, a single unit and lots of levels. The kids get to travel all over it. It's super exciting. Um, also, our lovely live pit that we have, again, conducted by Mr. Ennis, who is phenomenal. And we have about 21 students in this cast putting on this very, very large scale production. So it is a very big undertaking and we are incredibly proud of our students uh, for stepping up to the challenge and they are doing a wonderful job. So I hope you enjoy our production of Big Fish. Howdy y'all and welcome to the Historic Scottish Rite Theatre. At this time, we ask you to silence all cell phones and electronic devices and remind you that flash photography is strictly prohibited. There will be one 15 minute intermission. And don't forget to grab them daffodils for Edward. Quiet, Zachy. And now we invite you to sit back and relax as Bishop Eustace presents Big Fish. Dad, Mom's looking for you. You know, I don't know why we need rehearsal dinners. These people have been eating dinner their whole lives. They don't need practice. Is this where you taught me to fish? Yeah, you caught a catfish this big. It was about half that size, but thank you. And thank you for cleaning it. Dad, about tomorrow. You're nervous? I'm not. Yeah, you are. You got that twitch in you. I recognize it. Dad. When you were younger, you didn't even want to jump into the pool. I always had to sneak up behind you and push you in. Yeah, that was fun for me. Actually, I wanted to talk about you. My favorite subject. So, Josephine and I would appreciate if you didn't tell any of your stories at the wedding. My, my stories? And jokes. No stories, no jokes, no anecdotes. Fine. Okay, Will. Gotcha. Understood. <clears throat> Thanks. Oh, but you used to like my stories, though. Especially that one about the witch. I was six. Oh, you were never six. You were born a tiny, middle-aged man. You okay? I'm fine. You're the one who's in trouble here. Are you ready to get married? I am. Well, then here's to what's next. To what's next? Son? Where were you? You missed my game. Oh, well, how do you know I wasn't hiding in the stands? Maybe I didn't want to spook you, keep you from hitting your big home run. We were playing soccer. Well, that's barely a sport. So, what's it going to be tonight? Already marked it. Here. Oh, you, you don't want this. This is prefabricated, predigested. Here, let me tell you a real story. You mean another story about you? A story about life. Dad? Can you even read? Of course I can't. Listen. <clears throat> Chapter 9. Thus kept the Trojan march, but the Achaeans were holding over wondrous panic. What the heck is this book? It's about Trojan War. Okay, so ancient Rome and all that. They're actually Greek. That's my point, Will. We live in Alabama. We got a story under every leaf and every stone. What if I told you you could change the world with just one thought? What if I told you you could be a king? And 
anything you desire, boy, anything on a plate, all within your power to create. I know somewhere in the darkness there's a story meant for me where I always know exactly what to say. I know somewhere some surprising ending waits for me to tell it my own way. Be the hero of your story till it's done. Be the champion of the fight, not just the man. Don't depend on other people to put paper next to pen. Be the hero of your story, boy, and then you can rise to be the hero once again. Now, the best part of an adventure is the people you meet. What if I said I met a witch when I was very young? What if I said she showed me how I died? How I died? Powerless in the face of it, terrified to the wood. But that was where my life was changed for good. Hey, what if I said I met a giant wasting in a cave? What if I claimed I rose to be far braver than the brave? All my life a story, son, and everyone is true. So believe me as I'm telling you to be the hero of your story while you may. Be the guy who gets the girl then saves the day. You don't need some book of Greece to teach you how to stay alive. Be the hero of each story you derive. Then forever you're the hero who'll survive. Every tale that you invent becomes a life that you make real. Where each character you meet becomes your friend. You don't need to be a novelist to make believe what's waiting round the bend. Be the hero of your story till it's done. Why go promenade when you were born to run? You understand this premise, then you'll never be alone. You can conquer every challenge, you can face each stepping stone. Be the hero of your story. What if I swore I saw mermaids swimming in the mist? What if I told you she would be the first girl that I kissed? Out there in the water filled with eagerness and fear. Here is what she whispered in my ear. Something about that kiss transformed her. Pretty as she was in the water, she was even more beautiful out of it. Now listen, son, now one day I met this fisherman, you see? Oh, you gotta help me, man. If I don't catch a fish, my family's gonna starve. Well, it's because the fish are sleeping. Gotta get them moving a little. Try the Alabama stomp. The Alabama stomp? What's that? Let me show you. Looks every time. Come on, Will. All right, let's see you try it now. You got it. Well, you see, Will, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. But you teach a man the Alabama stomp, and you feed his soul. Come on, y'all, we gotta help this poor fella out.
I know somewhere in the future there's adventure made for me Filled with mystery and people I can love I know out there on the road of life I'll live the story I've been dreaming of Be the hero every time you get the chance If the music stops, continue with the dance on a whim or on a prayer, you get there only with your voice. Be attentive, be inventive, be the first one to rejoice with the story in your heart. Who won't need any other choice? You're the hero fighting dragons, winning wars. Be the hero, and the world will soon be yours. It was a miracle, Will. Come on. It doesn't seem plausible. Will. Dad, why do you tell so many crazy stories? Well, it's, it's because it's who I am. Tell me, Will, why does the sun shine? Because of fusion. Lord, Will, that was a rhetorical question. Edward! Quick, where's that book? Why is the light still on? Now you're in trouble. Edward Bloom! It's nine o'clock on a school night. Let this boy sleep. Uh, but we were just finishing up the chapter on Agamemnon. You know, why can't anyone have a normal name in these books? Like Chuck. Hey, Mom. Do you really get fish to jump out of the river by doing the Alabama Stomp? I suppose anything's possible. For example, I've heard legend of a brave and handsome man who happily fixed a leaky sink in the bathroom the very first time his wife asked, without excuses or delay. See, Will, that is what we call a myth. Except for the brave and handsome part, of course. <laughs> Lights out, both of you. You heard your mother. Dad? Son? Are there really witches? There are, but your mother doesn't want me telling you those stories. She said it'll give you nightmares. I'm not scared. Well, neither was I. At first. It is well-established fact that in most southern towns of a certain size, there exists a witch. Do we have a witch? No, but we got two Dairy Queens, so we're still coming out on top. Now, usually these witches stick to their minor incantations and love spells and whatnot. But of all the witches in all of Alabama, there existed one who was the most renowned, for she could see the future. Did she tell you the future? She showed me. That night in the swamp, there was just three of us. Just three boys out in a dare. But I didn't know that night would change my life forever. Shh, quiet, Zachy. I got a bug in my drawers. Help me, son. I ain't getting near your drawers. Oh, it's on the move. Uh, use your flashlight. It'll go towards the lap. Not that way. Do you want it to go down towards your feet? It's working. It's out. Come on, let's find that witch. Wait for me! Hey, Don, I think we're walking in circles. You want to take the lead, Bloom? Go ahead. I don't think there even is a way. Boys, you have broken a sacred circle. You better have a good reason. We wanted our fortunes read. I can show you the future with uncanny accuracy. Your loves, your lives, your deaths. Dollar piece. Can I borrow a dollar? No, he won't. She knows! Come on, tell me my future. You asked for it. Ah, oh, yes. The future's quite clear. What do you see? Do I get quarterback? You lead an unexceptional life, filled with minor triumphs and major disappointments. 
and then you die. What? So that's it? That's all the spirits see for you. I want to know how rich I'm going to be. A dollar poorer than when you started, now ask for you. I want my money back. Don, don't show Hexia! Hey, give it back! How about I smash it? How are you going to do fortunes without your crystal ball? I said give it back. For what? You think you can take me, Bloom? Fine. Here's your money back. Now hand it over. Witch lover. Witch lover! Here you go. Ma'am. Don't you want your fortune? Let me guess. I lead an unexceptional life. And then I die. Everyone dies, Edward Bloom. But your death is glorious. Let me show you. Why well, would I want to see how I die? What's your concern? Are you scared of hearing one thing new? When you could learn something secret that could help you through. In one good turn, I can show you counterfeit from true. That begins when you know how it ends. And yours is no ordinary life. You become important. You're the bravest man around. You're the kind with virtue always finding common ground. You climb each hill in front of you without a suffering sound. Compassionate and warm, but calm in any storm. Let me show you how your days unfold. You and me can play the hand you hold. When you gamble, then you get the gold. Every man must face a trial that brings him to his knees. But let me share a magic truth, a proof of all that thrives. The ones who face their fears lead the most interesting lives. lives. You want. I want a big life. And tell me what you see. I see a road. And tell me where it goes. In one direction. So don't you want to see what's next, what's waiting in the void? You may be disappointed, but you may be overjoyed. show you? The last moments of my life. What were they? What did you see? Surprise, London. I wouldn't want to ruin it for you. But you were there, and so was your mother. Although I didn't know her at the time, she was just a beautiful girl with red hair. You're gonna find that girl, but it won't be easy. So Seriously, you need to get dressed. The wedding's in 45 minutes. See that? That was almost seven. And seven's good luck. You'll need luck. What with that baby coming. 
what are you talking about? Josephine's pregnant. Uh, uh, how do you... Because you just told me. See, back when I worked in the circus, I developed this knack for reading expressions. Useful when you're working with lines. Plus, she was the only one not drinking at the rehearsal dinner. Okay, Dad, nobody knows she's pregnant. You can't tell Mom. But why not? Because it's super early. Statistically, there's a chance it could not happen, so... Statistically? Yes. You, an Alabama boy, meet an American girl all the way over in Baghdad. What are the odds of that statistically? We're both reporters, so it's not that remarkable. Lord, Will, I'd hate to see the rainbows in your world. Bet they're all shades of gray. It's just the baby. I don't want to jinx it. You won't. See that? That was seven. Everything's going to be fine. Promise me you won't say anything. And what we talked about earlier, no stories, no toasts. Oh, come on, Will. When have I ever embarrassed you? Okay, fine, I'm not good around orchestras, but I really thought I could play that violin. It doesn't look that hard. Edward, go get dressed. Sorry, Will was holding me up. Look at you. Give me a kiss. Just in my face. Go put on clothes. Oh, hey. Is that a violin? Let me see that. Are you nervous? No. Yes. Mom, about Dad. I know you can't control him. I can just as easily control the weather. Dad is like the weather. I can predict him, sort of, but I fundamentally don't understand him. I don't get him. He's this baffling hurricane. If you're going to worry about anyone, worry about your poor mother, abandoning me, poor woman on television. You love Josephine. I do. We turn on the cable news just to watch her sometimes. She's smart and pretty and kind. But you're my little Alabama lamb, all the way up there in New York. You want to practice one more time? Absolutely. Forward, together, side, together, back. Together. Not out loud, Will. Right. Better. That's it. See, Will, that's how it's done. Thank you all so much for coming. Josephine and I are unbelievably grateful to have so many friends here to help us celebrate. For people who didn't know, this is actually where Will proposed to me one year ago, right here on the banks of this river. I had just met Edward and Sandra, and I knew, I knew, that I wanted to be part of this family. That's my baby boy. So before we get to dinner, we have a couple of things to announce. Yes, yes, hello everybody. My name is Edward Bloom, and on behalf of myself and my wife Sandra, the beautiful one standing right there, I would like to welcome you all to Alabama. Now, my son said that I'm not allowed to give a toast tonight, but you will notice there is no drink in my hand. Technicality. Technicality, he says. See, I don't know what Will's talking about. I would have loved to have a talk with a father growing up. My daddy, he was a farmer, and you were lucky to get four words out of him. Until one day, one day I caught him out in the field, just blathering at length. He said to me that he couldn't get two words in between me and my mother. But the corn, the corn was all 
ears. <laughs> On the subject of fatherhood, I have an announcement to make. After careful consideration, I have decided to become a grandfather. Dad. Now I am sworn to secrecy, but I am told that my ambitions may be fulfilled sooner than I dared hope. Okay, okay, it's time to catch the bouquet. Ladies, follow me. Come on, Will, it's good news. It's too early. A thousand things could go wrong. They won't. Why are you such a pessimist? I'm a realist, Dad. And yes, it's good news. But it's our news. Why do you have to make everything about you? Because I got excited. I got a little carried away. You always get carried away. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you treating me like I'm the child. What kind of son doesn't let his father give a toast the to his son wedding? whose father does this? Oh, grow up, Will! I did. You weren't there. You were never there. Calm down. I was building a business. You were running away. From what? From you? From reality. All I got from you is a bunch of crazy stories about how awesome you are. And I'm sorry, Dad. That's not the man I see. Well, maybe you never bothered looking. Stop it, both of you. Before you say something, you can't take back. I'm done. So am I. Hey, you all right? That boy is bullheaded, Doc. I don't know where he gets it. I was asking about you. What's going on there? Put the stethoscope away, Doc. I'm fine. How long has this been going on? I don't know. A while? But look, it's nothing. You lost weight. What? Exercise. You didn't see me dancing out there? I'm telling you, I'm fine. Okay, okay. But come in on Monday and we'll be doubly sure. All right. Take another look. I'm trying. It's just up to the right. My right or its right? A little bit of patience will now hold it still. And there, voila, with light. A penis! It's a boy! Yes. We're having a son. If it's bad news, Doc, just tell me. It's not what we want to see. The tumor didn't shrink? No. It's grown beyond where we thought. But that doesn't mean... Of course it doesn't, honey. I just have ambitious cancer is all. Right, Doc? Exactly. We'll keep going though, right? Or try something new? There's a conversation to be had about what's next. Now, honey... I need to call Will. We never should have kept this from him. Fine, but you needn't worry him. Will doesn't know about any of this? He's got his own life up in New York. No sense bothering him. This is really happening. You thought I was making it up. No. I'll get dressed. Meet you outside. Will, you're going to have a son. I know. A son. Stranger, I'm feeling stranger than I've ever felt before, and so much more different, like something old has joined with something new, but still feels true. I'm passing through a rite that every parent does. I'm walking on some shared familiar ground, Yet every step I take is not a step it was. And I found I like the sound of stranger. A child I get to meet becomes my everything. My song to sing, Father. And suddenly the weight of it is real. What do I feel? I feel connected in a way I've never known. 
up a line from dad to me to newborn son. So from today, I'll never make a choice alone. One for all, all for one. And when he's born, I'll teach him how to use his common sense. He'll listen and he'll learn and he'll excel. I'll tell my son that life is lived in clear and present tense. Not only in the stories we can tell. My father told me stories I could never comprehend. In every tale he claimed to be the hero. I try to understand him, but I wonder if I can. Because after almost 30 years, I still don't know the man. I wish I knew the man, but he's a stranger. My father is a stranger I know very well. A puzzling shell, hopeful. What's on its way may help us both to grow. But I don't know, I don't know when I'll understand what made him wild. I don't know why he has the urge to fly. I want to face him like a man and not a child. So I'll try, I'll really try. And in time, my boy is sure to see brighter days for dad and me. We can do things better than before. So that strangers we will be. No more. Mom, I was just about to call you. What's, what's wrong? Mom? I'm coming home. We'll be on the next flight. I wanted to tell you right away, but your father didn't want anyone to know he was sick. How dare anyone think Edward Bloom is mortal? The treatment was a long shot, but your father was convinced it would work. What does Dr. Bennett say? She says comforting things, but we all know where this is headed. Mom, I'm so sorry. I want to do something. How can I help? I'm just happy you know. Family shouldn't have secrets. Mom, have you and Dad talked about money? We have plenty of money. Is the house paid off? Years ago. The day we sent in the last check, we had champagne. Your father opened it with a sword. <laughs> there was glass in the carpet for weeks. Mom, you won't mind if I look for the mortgage, the insurance? I'm worried about you, about what's going to happen have to keep a roof over your head. I'm not worried about the house. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about you. I'm fine, Mom. I'll be fine. You don't... Oh, I'm fine. You sound like your father. Is he difficult? One could argue. There's a challenge in every day. If you think I don't understand him, Give a listen to what I say. Sometimes he's like a tank full of laughing gas. Sometimes he's like a pain in the ass. But there is magic in the man, foolish magic in the man. And you know, Dad, are not about to break the spell. 
There is a magic in a man. Pay attention if you can. And maybe you will do just half as well. He never met Gandhi. He didn't invent the microwave. Sometimes he bends the truth with a wrecking ball. Sometimes he's bored with folks who think small. I call it magic in the man. All the ways he's better than. But all you see is him and me with miles to go. If you saw magic in the man rather than a battle plan, you might be glad that he's a dad, you know. People said it was like I was born for the water. Plus, I had a heck of a teacher. The only way to break the spell was with a kiss. Who can live in a fantasy and never see what's real? It's a fantasy I can see, so that it's real up here. It's merely entertainment on a non-stop flight. What makes you so sure that you're so right? There is magic a in the a man. For grander. Magic Why allow him to man. improvise? You know Give him only a not moment and sure he shared a Nobel there Prize. Is magic in the man. Foolish magic in the man. But I worry, son, that he's begun to fall apart. Without the magic and the man, I'm right back where I began. A frightened girl with just a broken heart. So even if it's quick, please learn one little trick and try to make the magic stop. So, Dad, maybe I can mow the lawn? How tall do you like it? This tall. I can mow my own grass, though. Besides, people needn't worry so much. This isn't how it happens. This is not how I go. Right. The witch. The witch? There was a woman in the swamp who told him how he died. She showed me. And this is not it. So how does it happen? Surprise ending. Wouldn't want to ruin it for you. Ugh, and you, forget the life you know. Having a child changes everything. I mean, there's the burpings, and the diapers, and the midnight feedings. Did he do any of that? No, but I heard it's terrible. Just <laughs> awful. Well, I should probably get dinner started. I, I can help. help. No, no, you stay here and talk. Baby, you stay out here. So, Dad. I could probably get the pump working if you wanted to swim. Don't put yourself out, Will. It's fine. You know where the chemicals are? I used to do when you were gone, remember? Well, Will, I was a traveling salesman. Couldn't really stay at home. I wasn't trying to pick a fight. Oh, here, you can feel him kick. Whoa, he's strong. When's he coming? 22 weeks, so... Five months. Five months? Well, you make sure to tell him about me, and only the good stuff. Of course. Yeah, Dad, I'd really love to know more about the real versions of events, stories, you. Maybe we could go over some things while I'm here? You mean while I'm here? So I want to know the full history now. I know you grew up in Alabama, but was it here in Montgomery? No, but it wasn't too far. It was this tiny little town called Ashton. You see, our town was so small, our phone book was the yellow page. You know, our town was so small, our zip code was a fraction. You know, our town 
was so small that we only had three jokes. But the best part about growing up in a small town like Ashton is a boy with ambition can be a pretty big deal. Son. Yes, you are. Edward Bloom, just like I thought you from Superstar. Hero of a baseball diamond, it's a home run. Champion of the science fair, he's a number one. Captain of the student council wins the debate. Always knows exactly what to say. Football hero, too. Look what he can do. Ashton's favorite son in every way. Prettiest, Aww. smartest, Aww. and blondest girl in all of Ashton. How can I love you like you love me when you are an angel and I'm just a simple boy in love? Nothing will ever come between us. Now calm down, calm down. Mayor, there's a giant living in them hills. I've seen him. He's ten feet tall with crazy eyes of fire. He might eat my cat. You ain't gonna do it, Mayor. We will. I won't have mob violence in this town. Not without a permit. I got your permit right here. We got to smash that giant before he smashes us. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. we need torches and pitchforks. Wait, wait. Has anyone tried talking to this giant? You can't reason with him. He's a monster. Well, I'll do it. I'll go talk to him. See if I can get him to move on. Edward Bloom. Don Price. You want to sweet talk a giant? Go ahead, Bloom. It's your funeral. That's just it, Don. Which showed me how I go, and it don't happen like this. Hello? Hello? My name is Edward Bloom, and I've come to talk to you. Go away. No, I will not. Not unless you show yourself. Come on out here and face me like a man. I said go away. That's it. I'm coming in. Just what I thought. Only kind of giant you are is a giant coward. I will smash your bones and eat you for dinner. Well, you'd still be hungry. I'm more appetizer size myself. Edward Bloom. Get out of my cave. No, I will not. I came here to talk to you. I don't want to talk. I just want to be alone. See, I don't believe that. I think that you are alone, and you just pretend that you like it. Underneath these dead animals and death threats, I see a man who might just need a friend. You don't know me. Sure I do. See. Up until now, I have thought of myself as the biggest thing in Ashton. But then you, you coming along is a reminder that there's something bigger out there. So go. Come with me. Listen, John, this place is too small for a man of your size and a man of my ambition. Say, John, when was the last time you left this cave anyways? I'm agoraphobic. Oh, I don't know what that means, but you need to get out of here. <laughs> You're not very bright, are you? Well, how smart are you? Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. Whoa, that's deep. 
Wow. There's nothing for me out there. I don't fit in. I've never even been in a car. Well, you got those big legs. Just walk. I've never been in a house. Then sleep under the stars. I'll never find a girl. Giant, this is the South. We love our women big and beautiful. But I... You can pong your life away, wishing things were better. Waiting here for judgment day while knitting you a sweater. But I believe that kind of life won't set your spirit free. So my friend, one small suggestion, where you want to be. You can take a journey through this country's flesh and blood. On a ride past countryside and Mississippi mud. Hit the street with two big feet to bear your heavy load And live life out there on the road Anything you want to be and anything you say Come tomorrow you'll be free of who you are today Action and adventure as a change start fix the boat We'll live life out there on the road would you rather be like royalty, respected like a king? Where it's all civilized, you'd be surprised. The songs you hear them sing, people will greet you there, they'll want to share enthusiastic news. And all you need is a guarantee with one big pair of shoes. One big pair of shoes. Say, John, what's your name? Carl. Listen, Carl, the world is huge. 197 million square miles, approximately. Wow, you're good with numbers. Only big ones. Well, naturally. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Don't you want to step outside? Look around, see what's waiting there. You were born to wake each one someplace you've never been. Checking out the locals as they watch us checking in. Every new encounter in another news of code, we'll find it out there. That's him right there! Wait, he's not a monster, he's a thinker, he's a whiz. This boy isn't half as bad as you all think he is. Carl, tell him the joke. What do you get when you cross an elephant, a hippo, and a rhino? Well, I don't know. Hell if I know. I've been so inspired, I've decided we repair We're heading out there on the road You're leaving? Now? Jenny, I can't imagine a place better than Ashton But if I never look, then I'll never know for sure Edward Bloom, don't tell me that you were leaving us for good Jenny, yes, I'm leaving, but for good I never could I'll be back someday And I'll be waiting while you're gone Till then be happy on the road Come on, Carl, let's show my traveling step Every road trip needs a traveling step Take with you this Keenan City and know our doors will always be open to you. I'll never forget about Ashton. I'll come back someday. I promise. Suddenly I'm the king who holds the key and everybody secretly is dying to be more and more like who? Like you? Like you. I can see America dependable and true. Open sky and passersby congratulating you. Find the open highway and you take the mother load. We're crazy out there on the happy out there on the finally out there.
found. What is that? It's the key to the city from when he was a teenager. He left Ashton in search of adventure. Oh, God. He got to you, didn't he? He seduced you. Do you know how your mother and father met? They met in college. Wait, which story did he tell you? There are at least seven versions of how he met my mother. This was romantic. They're all romantic. My father is romantic. Was the giant in it? Yes, Carl. So, Carl the giant. Supposedly my dad's best friend, but I never met him. No photo, no evidence he actually existed. I'm worried my father's going to be gone, and I'll never know what was true. But does it really matter what's true? Your father is telling you these stories for a reason. Do you understand the stories? Do you understand the man? How many stories are there? I don't know. I've never counted. You should. You should make a list. Okay. Let's do it. Chronologically, it starts with the witch. She teaches him what? Not to fear death? Then he meets the mermaid. She teaches him about love, how love transforms a person. I thought she teaches him how to swim. You never listen. So my father leaves Ashram with Carl the Giant. They have a series of wacky misadventures that roughly approximate the 12 labors of Hercules. What about the tornado? Fine, the tornado. It's not important. It's incredibly important. Your father was headed for the big city, but then fate, fate pushes him towards love. You have a lot of hormones in your body right now. Fine, the winds of destiny bring him to the <laughs> circus. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, any one of these acts could join the Callaway Circus. Except you. Come here. If I was looking for a miscellaneous object dropper, you'd be at the top of my list. But I'm not. Next up, number 73, the Alabama Lambs. Yes, us. We're the Alabama Lambs. Miss Templeton, does your daddy know you're here? He knows I'm with my two best friends. Tell me, your father. Is he still an unmedicated sheriff with unmedicated rage issues? That's dead. Best you get along home and breathe not a word of this folly. Wait, Mr. Callaway. I'm supposed to be here. I know it. And I know I don't want to be hanging on your daddy's wall like this. Next up, number 74, Zaximus the Sensational. Haven't you ever had a dream, a hope, a wish? Please, Mr. Callaway, just let us try. Fine, let's hear it. Shim, shim, I'm a little lamb from Alabama. Flim, flim, I'm a little lamb from Alabama. Waiting to be fed, hoping to be led by a little shepherd boy from ISS. ISS. PP. I wham, bam, like a little lamb from Alabama. Hot damn, who's your little lamb from Alabama? I'm a little miss, praying for a kiss. Just a little lamb from Alabama. stops when suddenly you see her time stops and everything you knew changes and life beyond this moment is better bigger time stops though still your heart is beating Time stops 
Though you don't take a breath, she's there. And all you've ever wanted is nearer, clearer. I used to think the world was small. Now I don't think that way at all. Time stops when dreams come true before you. Time stops when fantasy is real. I knew this moment was expected, but this good and cold. Terrific, but no one wants to see that in a circus. Teach those steps to an elephant, and then you'd have something. People want to see things beyond their imagination, bigger than life. People want you. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Giant Hick. Hey, Miss Calloway. What's your name? Giant. You got a name? Doesn't matter. More exotic if you don't. It's Carl. Say. Carl, have you ever considered a career in the world of entertainment? More importantly, have you ever heard of the term, uh, what is it, unconscionable contract? It's an agreement in which one party grossly misrepresents facts in order to take advantage of the other party's perceived ignorance. That's a thorough definition. I want 30% off the top and all the food I can eat. 10%. 20 And I won't do nudity. No one's asking. Done. Edward, what's wrong? Carl, I just saw the woman I'm going to marry. But then, I lost her. Heartbreaking. Most men gotta get married before they lose their wives. The good news, I'm gonna make your friend here a star. That's, that's great. At least one of us will be happy. Jeez, kid. This girl, real pretty, blue dress, red hair. Who is she? Where does she live? Kid, don't waste your time. I know her daddy. She's out of your league. What? What do you mean? You don't even know me. Let me guess. You were the hero of Hickville, big fish in a small pond. This here is the ocean, and you're drowning. Take my advice and go back to Puddleville. You'll be happy there. Look, I may not have much, but I've got more ambition than any man you're ever going to meet. I'm going to find that girl. I'm going to marry her. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her. Go write your Harlequin romance somewhere else. I've got a circus to run. If you tell me who she is, 
I'll work night and day, and you won't even have to pay me. Okay. Once a month, if you work, if you slave, if you cry for me, then I'll give you a clue. Once a month, if you clean, if you haul, if you die for me, then the clue will be true. Once a month, it could be what she thinks, what she likes, where she lives, what she drinks, what she hopes. And all you have to do is pull the ropes. Closer to her, I'll get you closer to her. You only need to be my devotee because I'll tell you where she was born, or if she plays the French horn, then you'll be closer than you ever was. First clue, she likes dancing. Dancing. Back to work. Closer to her, you're one step closer to her. I'm not afraid to stoop to stooping poop because He'll stoop her poop. You'll learn what perfume she wears and what she says in her prayers. And be much closer than I ever was. Miss Calloway, it's time. For what? The clue about the girl I'm going to marry. She wouldn't clue. You wouldn't get married at all. Back to work. Days into weeks, months into weeks, months, months into years. years. Just clue, clue after, after clue after, after clue. She, she likes blue. Seasons go by in the blink of an eye, but the dream doesn't seem to come true. Barbecue. Year after year, with the hope I would hear something kind, something fresh, something new. Mr. Calloway, it's been three years. Kid, there's other fish in the sea. But I'm already hooked. Why do you insist on keeping her name a secret? Secrets are the backbone of society. Everybody ought to have a few. I believe in secrets and I'll keep mine for a while. They keep me a success. They make you work for less. But I'm a man of my word. Your girl? She's going to college. College? Closer to her. Closer My to her. Closer to her. While I've been working, working hard, hard and time is flying by. Closer to her. I've paid my price, I should go. Still, there's one thing I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Calloway? This is difficult to explain. Mr. Calloway, you're a werewolf. Or maybe not so difficult. This is your big secret? You don't need to be ashamed of being a werewolf. Really? Heck no. Just be yourself and be happy. Kid, I like you. How about a bonus clue? Daffodils. Daffodils? Her favorite flower. Those yellow ones, real pretty. Mr. Calloway, let me bring her some daffodils. And tell me who she is. Hell, her name is Sandra Templeton. She goes to Auburn University. Thank you, Mr. Calloway, thank you! My ball! My ball, my ball, my ball, my ball, my ball! Edward, how far are we from Auburn University? 763 miles. Then I'm gonna need your help. Well, fellas, load them in. <laughs> Like a cannonball circling a human comet above. Like a cannonball circling a constellation of love. Filling out the heavens, making waters part. Heading straight for his beloved's welcoming heart. Well, who is Jenny Hill? I know that name. She was my dad's high school girlfriend. The prettiest, blondest girl in Ashton. What is that? It's
It's a mortgage for a house in Ashton. Your father co-signed a loan with Jenny Hill? She's real? This doesn't make sense. Why would my father buy a house with another woman? Sandra Temple. Oh, you're not. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sandra. Oh, hey, Sandra, it's me. You're, you're not Sandra. I, I apologize. I'm very sorry. I sure are a lot of girls with red hair at this school. Oh, Auburn. Like the, oh, that makes so much sense. Sandra! Sandra Templeton! Yes? Look, you don't know me, but my name is Edward Bloom, and I'm in love with you. I've spent the last three years of my life trying to find out who you are, but it's all worth it to see you here, now, and to finally get to talk to you. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't apologize. I mean, I'm the luckiest man you're gonna meet today. I was indentured to a traveling circus, elephants and all. I was shot out of a cannon when they up and lost the ball. I met werewolves, giants, dancing bears, and you don't think it's true? And how on earth do I explain the road led me here to you? Wait, are you? Look, I saw you, and all of time, and all the world stood still. And I promise I'll prove my worth, I'll roam the earth until you believe me. And we can be at last forever one. Don't be afraid. Be my crusade. But you're too late. I'm engaged to be married. Tell me what I have to go and do to make you change your mind. Anything I have to promise to, I'll gladly get behind. I'm the man that you should marry. Your intendant through and through. Otherwise, I wouldn't have walked the road that led me here to you. You're the boy from the circus. I am. I wasn't sure you were real. I imagine things a lot. <laughs> well, then imagine us together, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Bloom. Edward Bloom? Yes. From Ashton? How did you know? The boy I'm engaged to. He's from Ashton. Don Price. Don Price? They let him into college? He's studying political science. I'd feel gravity if it were a subject. I help him where I can. What, bandage his knuckles as he drags him across the ground? That's a terrible thing to say. A terrible price to pay. Don't marry that cretin. Don. Moron. No, Don. Oh, hey, Don. Bloom, what the heck are you doing? Promise me you won't hurt him. I promise. This is my girl, mine, look. Don! Hey, take your hand off her. Or what, you're not so big without a giant to back you up. Yeah, well I'll always be the bigger man. Don, <laughs> stop it, stop. I won't ever marry you. This was a mistake. What, you actually love this guy? He's practically a stranger. Yet I prefer him to you. Witch lover. Witch lover! Are you all right? Once a month, a scrap of news. It felt like you were there. Once a month, I heard your voice. I held you solitaire. Amos said that you loved music, so that you were college bound. But one thing more than all the rest. Fill the heart inside my chest. He told me you loved 
Daffodils And countless as the stars that shine They stood in never-ending line Till all I saw was daffodils Beside the lake, beneath the tree all fluttering and dancing in the breeze. And like that moment right between asleep and waking, I thought I saw 10,000 strong in one quick glance. But then I saw your face and knew beyond mistaking, a million flowers couldn't stand. A chance So let's pretend The daffodils Are just an introduction to The blossoming of me and you Beside the lake, beneath the trees, beyond mistake, please marry me. Please marry me. But you hardly know me. But I have the rest of my life to find out. These. And these, these, and these, these, and these, and these, and these, these are for you, only for you. Let's build a world of death or deals that never fades and never dies. I see the answer in your eyes. I'll be the bride, I'll be the groom. A daffodil in every room. And I will shower you with flowers. For my name isn't Edward Bloom. Hey, I'm Mr. Ennis. Here we are at the Scottish Rite Theatre. I've got my pit behind me. The stage is behind you. We're here doing another play, another year, and we're doing a wonderful musical called Big Fish. And the music is absolutely beautiful. Please come out and see this show. It is stunning. The actors and everybody are amazing who are doing this. The crew is amazing. The sound is amazing. The set is amazing. And we're all very excited to be back here at the Scottish Rite to be doing this show for Bishop Eustace Prep.
Why would my father have mortgaged you a house I've never heard about? And what's the deal with Jenny Hill? Maybe she's a friend. Maybe she's more than that. My father was a traveling salesman. He could have easily had a second life. A second family. Stop, that's not real. What is real with my father? What if all these crazy stories are just a smokescreen so we don't bother looking for the truth? My father bought a secret house in Ashton. I can't pretend we didn't find this. Okay, okay, I know you want to find answers, but think about the time you have left. You are here to make peace, Will, not start a war. War? Did he tell you the war story? Because that's when I first realized he was making it all up. Now, I don't like to talk about the war too much. I like to think of myself as just another soldier like all the other Alabama boys. Until one night, when I intercepted a message from the enemy. What did it say? It said that that night at the big USO show, the enemy was planning to kill General Patterson. How? With a blow dart shot by a deadly assassin. Only I could save him. Weren't you scared? A man does what he must, but a hero does what no other man can. It was at that moment I realized who my opponent was. Red Fang, the poison assassin! What are the colors of the only man I love? Red, white, and true. Who is the guy for us, forever glorious? Red, white, and Oh! 
Buckley, that doesn't make sense. Buckley, years earlier I had been bitten by the chukalaba snake of Tanzania. I was immune to red flags poison. It don't matter, sir. I'm just another soldier like all these other boys. And I think that they deserve a show. Ladies, what do you say? said that that was the turning point of the war. But I like to think I was just one man doing his part. When did that all happen? When did that happen? During the war. But which war? Which war? Don't they teach you anything in school? That's just it. They do teach us. What would I do without you? Mom, is it true? Aren't there witches? Why, did your dad have another run-in with Miss Johnson at the library? That woman is terrifying. And honestly, your dad doesn't really know how to whisper. Daffodils, now we know you did something. Bob Ray quit, so they gave me his route. All the way down to Dallas. That's a lot of driving. But it's a great chance to expand my region. I don't care how far you go, Edward Bloom. Just as long as you make it back. There's a young child right there. So, got any more soccer games this week? It's not soccer season anymore. Of course not. Listen, Will, I'm gonna need you to take care of your mother. You're the man of the house while I'm out there on the road. On the road to where? To everywhere. How do I explain it? It's not about the destination. The road is something that's in you, a need, a feeling. You don't drive on it, but it drives you. Understand? No. I've never been a man who lived in office life. I've never been a man behind the desk. I've always been a man who said that staying still is like playing dead. The kind who's looking forward to the challenges ahead. People say that's irresponsible. People tell me stay at home. But I'm not made for things like mowing lawns or apron strings. I'm at best when not at rest. So I fight the dragons, and I storm the castle, and I win a battle or two. Then comes the day, it's time I'm packing up, and I am bringing all my stories home to you. All I can see is miles ahead with miles to go. All I can see is wind and sun and sky. 
Stop for a coffee, make a friend, and pray the day will never end. Cause there's one more adventure waiting round another bend. Where I fight the dragons, and I storm the castles, and I win a battle or two. But then this feeling comes like 50,000 drums all bang. Bring my stories home to you. And I wonder as I wander on the road from door to door exactly what you think of where I've been. Do you know I joined the circus, met a mermaid, fought a war? But do you know I think of you through thick and thin? Because even though I'm making deals and bringing people joy, I'm usually only thinking of my boy. Out there on the road, I pray, you'll come to me one day and say, Let's fight the dragons and then storm the castles till we win what needs to be won. So when I'm old and tired, you'll do the job required, you'll be there. Telling stories to your son And then we fight the dragons And then storm the castles And I do the best that I can Cause everybody knows That's how the story goes To turn each boy into a bigger man so I'll fight the dragons till you can. Stranger, I'm feeling stranger than I've ever felt before, and so much more different, like something old has joined with something new. What should I do? Dad, son, can we talk? I believe we have permission. Do the pills help? Mostly, but they got me floating a bit. Not really sure what's real. I know that feeling. Do you know much about icebergs, Dad? Oh, I saw an iceberg once. They were toting it down to Dallas for drinking water. Except they didn't expect there to be a giant elephant inside of it. One of those woolly ones. Uh, what do you a mammoth! Dad. What? I'm trying to make a metaphor here. Oh, well, then you don't want to start with a question. You see, well, people like to answer questions. What you should have done is, the thing about, meta the thing about icebergs is... The thing about icebergs is, you only see 10% of them. The other 90% is below the water, where you can't see it. And that's what it is with you, Dad. I'm only seeing this little bit that sticks above the water. What's that? Down to my nose? My chin? I have no idea who you are, because you've never told me a single fact. Yes, I have. I tell stories. Yes, you tell stories, Dad. You make stuff up. And I'm wondering if it's all to conceal something you don't want people to know. You've got me. My secret identity. Superman! Can we talk about Ashton, Dad? Ashton? I grew up there, you know that. So why do we never visit? It's not that far a drive. There's not much to see there. Dad, I'm about to have a kid of my own here. It would kill me if he went through his whole life with doubts. It would kill you, huh? Well, then let's hear it. 
What exactly are you accusing me of? I'm not. I'm just trying to get a handle on some things. Well, handle them as you will. I think we're done talking. Dad. Get out! <coughs> will? <coughs> what did you do? I didn't do anything. Calm down. Calm down, Will. I know you're trying to protect me, but you can't. What happened? They came at me like I'm a villain. Each time he tells another tale, he drifts another step from me. He's got it wrong. I'm not the bad guy. I wish I knew the reason. He chooses fantasy instead of facing facts. Something hidden, something he fears. Will I learn the truth before he disappears? This river between us grows wider each day. He talks, but he mostly has little to say. I beg him to separate the truth from the tale, but the river invites him. This river between us grows harder to bear. He's standing beside me, but not really there. His flights turn to fancy as soon as he'll start, but his fancy excites him. So Edward takes heart. My father talks of miracles, of mystery and fate. He's been around the world, he says, and dined with heads of state. My father speaks of fireworks, of shooting stars above you. But how can you believe a liar when he says I love you? This river between us. There's a river between us. There's, There's an ocean, ocean between us. And now I finally get the knife. My son's convinced that I'm a liar. Now there's a funny punchline, and in my final hour, discarded like the trash, he insults me, then stands apart, and thinks he's smart. This river between us is selfish and cold. It flows where it wants to, it can't be controlled. My son doesn't want me to be what I am. He don't give a damn. He only sees what he invents. He only sees the black and white. All make believe and all pretend. And always wants to start a fight. He doesn't change. He doesn't stay. And, and so, so the river, river winds its way. way. This, this river, river between, between us may never be crossed. And why we stay silent, we're violently tossed. I'll leave him to ponder. I'll leave him alone. Cause he's made a stone. He's made of stone. stone. This river between us can rage like the sea. Holding on for dear life is my father and me. He'll come to his senses. He's swimming and yet he'll drop those defenses. He's caught in a net. And though I can't change him, someday he'll regret. This river between us. Each time he tells another tale. Between us. He drifts another step from me. This river, this river, this river, this river, this. Honey, it's me. You're okay. Let's calm down. Just tell me what happened. It was. I, I was drowning. It's. All kind of blurry now. It was just a nightmare, honey. You're okay. You're right here with me. You should be fine. The roof should hold up. The shingles still got about ten years left in them. You'll be okay. Oh, what did I say?
I feel at ease. Wallpaper peeling, paint wearing thin. Here's where I stand and begin. I don't need. could be a single shingle dangling overhead. I don't need a roof to make my bed. Close your eyes. I'm still beside you. I don't need a roof to call you mine. I don't need adventure in a sun far away frontier. I don't need a roof to feel you here. All I need. I don't need a legal deed to help me play my part. I don't need a roof to hold my heart. Stay with me. Excuse me. Hi. <laughs> oh. Hello. I wasn't expecting you. Are you Jenny Hill? I am. And you're Will, Eddie's son. You look so much like him. How did you know my father? From high school, before that even. Were you and my father having an affair? Wow. You just said it. I've seen him with women. He flirts. He always has. On some level, I presumed he was cheating on my mother. I just never had proof. That's your signature, right? The deed to this house? He co-signed the loan? Can I ask you a question? Why'd you come here today? If you found this, why didn't you just ask Eddie? Because he's dying. Look, I don't know how much you want to know about any of this. 
you have one image of your father, and it would be wrong of me to go and change that. My father talked about a lot of things he never did. And I'm sure he did a lot of things he never talked about. I'm just trying to reconcile the two. You said you went to high school with him? Was that here in Ashton? It was in Ashton, but Ashton wasn't here. You do know what happened at the town, right? No. Oh, honey, that's the only reason your father came back. The state was building a new reservoir. The whole valley was going to be flooded. In just a few hours, the town of Ashton would be 30 feet underwater. Edward Bloom came back to take one last look at the town he had left so long ago. What do we want? Nothing to change! When do we want it? Forever! What do we want? Nothing to change! When do we want it? Forever! As long as we're chained here, the state won't dare drown this town. Edward Bloom? It can't be. It is! We knew you'd come back. When you left, you said, quote, I'll never forget Ashton. I'll come back. I promise. We just thought it'd be sooner. Edward Bloom. Don Price. That's Mayor Don Price. Congratulations. Look, I heard that they're flooding the town. So what's your plan, Edward? Me? You think I'm here to save you? You're persuasive. You can talk to them, get them to stop building the dam. The dam's already built. The river's already rising. The state's not going to let us all drown. Does anyone even know you're here? Yeah. Maybe. Wait, no one knows we're here? Edward, you've got to help us. You're the only one that can save the town. Uh-uh, not this time. Edward's not a savior. Edward's not a saint. How can he be good for us? He's not the thing he says he ain't. We can change our fate, you bet we can. We don't need this interloping man. You're right. I am not. Wait, what? You've got to let go of the past. I suggest that we start over. Now? Start over. How? Instead of drown, we move the town and start over. Wow. We can sweat, we can fret, till we're all soaking wet. But good God, there's a flood on its way. But if we start over, then tomorrow begins today. Say, what's so good about these buildings? Nothing. These roads, they're full of potholes. But that's not what makes a town. A town is made of people and memories and dreams. You've got those. You don't need to stay here to stay together. But where are we moving to? We got to get some new land first. We couldn't afford to build a new town anyway. What if I got you the land and the money? Well, you know where to find us. <laughs> I'll tell you, Edward. When we met, I lived a kind of secretive life. I was a mysterious man. After meeting you, I met myself and my wife. All because you told me I can. You're upset, you're in need. I've got land and a deed. You can have every weed, every stone. You're the only man who I would ever give a thing to. The truest friend that I've ever known. I love this land. Lots of tasty rabbits. Thank you, Mr. Calloway. Thank you! Edward, when I met you, I was living in a cave. You convinced me to start over, start over. We'd offset the construction cost by floating a 30-year fixed-rate bond tied to the Nikkei Index. I know a guy. In a rush, you'll be flush, I'll get cash, but hush, hush, I won't do this for just any joke. You can start over, and Edward, I'll give you the dough. Thank you, Carl, thank you. I got you the land just over the hill and money to build a new town. 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 <laughs> Start over, start over. Instead of drown, we move the town and start over. We can't.
can sweat, we can fret, till we're all soaking wet. So you better believe what we say. If we start over, then tomorrow begins today. Tomorrow begins today. Tomorrow begins today. Tomorrow begins. Tomorrow begins. Wait. If what you're saying is true, then that's the biggest thing my father's ever done. He saved a town. Why wouldn't he tell me that story? Because the story doesn't end there. Edward, you saved us again! Me? That was all Don's idea. Water's rising, let's go. Ma'am, we gotta go. The river's already starting to rise. You're too late. No, I'm not. We still got about an hour left. You are years too late. Jenny, what are you... I, I thought you married. Moved away. My husband left me too. You can never compete with the fantasy. A girl only gets one true love, and that was you. Oh, Jenny, I I'm sorry. Just forget me like you did before. Let me drown here, Edward Bloom. I will not. You did. I've been drowning since the moment you left. I'm not here to argue or confess Only here for damsels in distress Leave this mess and start over Start over Say bye to the old fantasy and start over When there's pain, don't complain Just hold on through the rain And you'll wonder what caused such a fuss If we start over Then tomorrow begins for us A little closer, a little closer. Now, just watch out for that venomous snake. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, ready? One, two, three. Oh my, is this really my house? All you have to do is sign. Edward Bloom. See, Jenny, I told you I'd come back, and I'm a man of my word. Thank you. I'm in love with my wife. From the moment I met her till the day I die, she is the only one. Lucky girl. Jenny, I I'm sorry. He never came back. And I guess he never said a word about saving Ashton. The greatest thing he ever did and not a story to go with it. He could have left you out of the story. No, he could never risk you coming here, finding out. It had to go untold. It was just a kiss. You don't understand him, do you? I want to. Honey, you're the key to all this. The way Eddie smiled when he talked about you, well, you were just a boy, but you were smart. He was so proud of you. You knew that, didn't you? He wanted you to be proud of him, too. Hi. What? What's wrong? Are you... When? Where is he? Is mom? Okay. I'm coming home. I'm sorry, I have to go. Is it Eddie? Is I it don't know.
What happened? Her father stopped breathing. They called the ambulance. Is he going to be okay? I mean, will he get back to the way he was when? Mom, I'm so sorry. I should have been there. There's nothing you could have done. What does Dr. Bennett say? Some tests. They'll know better tomorrow morning. I need to go downstairs, fill out some paperwork. I'll go with you. No. Someone should stay with him. I'll go with you. Dr. Bennett? Well? How long have you known my father? How old are you? Add a few years to that. How would you describe him? 5'9", 160, regulated hypertension. Can he hear us? Hard to say what anyone hears. Harder still to know if they're listening. I know about action, Dad. I know what you did. You saved a town and broke a girl's heart. I get why you didn't want mom to know. I do. But what you did was heroic. I made a list of your stories. There are 36 basic tales, with a lot of variations, of course. Some are just jokes, <laughs> awful jokes, mostly. But you take the rest, and it's like a myth. An epic tale about a farmer's son from Alabama who wanted to see the world. You never got to, though. I did. And I think that's because of you. All this time, I thought you were trying to impress me. You were trying to inspire me. Dad? Dad, do you want me to get a nurse? What can I do? Can I help? Can I get you something? Water? The river. The river? Tell me how it happens. Uh, uh, how what happens? How I go. I, I don't... You mean what the witch showed you? I don't know that part of the story, Dad. You never told me what you saw. I can't. Dad, I don't know how to do this. Well, I can try, Dad. Just tell me how it starts. Like this. Okay. Okay. First things first. We are in this prison cell. Have to find a way to break out. Find another place to stake out. Look around, be sure we aren't seen. Slowly check the door before we're spotted. Were we spotted? I know you've been a secret double agent, but we can turn the page into another kind of tale. Let's go. The door is just our first opponent. So step out of your state of shock. We only need to pick this lock. No need. What's next is all anyone needs to begin. What's next has been a friend to you. What's next to do? One word and then suddenly one more again. Just like a pen writing a perfect tale. Out the door. And pray the coast is clear. Edward? Nose is to the ground before we're spotted. We were spotted. So now we face the ultimate decision. Relinquish our control as we surrender up the fight. Or else we say hello to the collision. Just do our job and do it well. Or better yet, let's run back hell. Will, what are you doing? I figured out what's wrong with me, Doc. I've been out of the water for too long. Of course. What's next is all anyone needs to begin. What's next has been 
a friend to you, what's next to do? One word, and then suddenly one more again. Just like that pen writing a perfect tale. Edward Blue, blue's a good color on you. Rarely brings out your eyes. All right, Dad. You know who else had blue eyes? The mermaid? The mermaid, blue as the seas, absolutely beautiful. Hey, look, my old Chevy. Edward Bloom, how did you swim through danger in the world? What was in the heart that beats inside you? Were you simply wetter than the ordinary average man? Or was it just your fins and scales to guide you? To what's next? We start the car. What's next? We hit the road. What's next? We find the river. What's next? I don't know. What's next? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well. And who do we see at the river to greet you? Everyone there at the river to meet you. Everyone you ever knew, ever spoke of, waiting for you to arrive. Now can you see Carl by the tree in the distance? He must arise with his usual flair. Zacky and Don gathered round cheering on Yes, even the witch is there. She is there. What's Edward next Blue, is all anyone needs to say begin. What's next has been a friend to you. What's next you. to only one dad, only inspiring one son. Edward, you're done writing your perfect tale, telling the perfect tale. It was a perfect day. Well, I can't say this was much of a surprise. But I thank you all for coming. A man is as rich as his friends. And I, I'm a tycoon. But someone's missing. I've seen this all before When I was just a child I met a witch who took a bow And showed me how it ended We stood here on the shore The air was sweet and mild With disbelief and plausibly suspended in my child's imagination, I remember you. Oh, I didn't know if we were foes or friends. But now you're standing here. I see the vision coming clear. I know exactly how this ends. It ends with you, it ends with me, it ends the way a story's ending is supposed to be, a bit insane, a touch of pain, adeptly told, yet uncontrolled, it ends with faith. It ends with love, it ends with water in the river and the sun above, part epic tale, part fire sail, part all sincere, and standing here, I know I wasn't perfect, I know my life was small, I know that I pretended that I do it all. But when you tell my story, and I hope somebody does, 
remember me as something bigger than I was. It ends with sons. It ends with wives. It ends with knowing where the pavement bends. We find our lives. So let it come and let me go. Show me the waves and let them flow. It all ends well. This much I know. And that's how it happens. That's how you go. I don't think we've met. I'm Will. I'm Carl. Grandma, what is it? We saw the biggest fish in the whole world. It was as big as a car. Now, son, let's stick to the facts. It was at least as big as a truck. Yeah, a truck, and we're going to catch it. I can't wait. I want to see this fish. Well, you two get hungry. There's barbecue. You know, son, 
It was right here on this spot where your father helped me catch my first fish. It was this big. How do you do it? That is a Bloom family secret passed away from father to son. Be the hero of your story if you can. Be the champion in the fight, not just the man. On a wing or on a prayer, you'll get there only with your voice. With a story in your heart, you won't need any other choice. You're a hero fighting dragons, winning wars. Be the hero, and the world will soon be yours. hero of your story if you can be the champion in the fight not just the man on a wing or on a prayer you'll get there only with your voice with the story in your heart you won't need any other choice you're a hero fighting dragons winning wars 